Hello, my name's George, and today I'm going to show you how we're going to turn this Brita dispenser into our very own aquaponics system. So what is aquaponics? Essentially, it's taking the waste that comes from fish and utilizing it as fertilizer and food for plants. You see, the fish will reside in this lower compartment, and the water will get pumped up into the upper reservoir, where the, well, along with the waste. And the waste will feed the plants, the plants will filter out the waste, and the water will return, return back to this lower compartment. The, there are bacteria, good bacteria, that will be in this system that will break down the waste and the ammonia and turn it into valuable nitrates and nitrites for the plants. And that's some awesome food for the plants. So you might be wondering, what are the benefits of doing aquaponics? I can tell you that there are many. Besides being environmentally friendly, it's really cost effective. For example, last time I went to a grocery store and I wanted to buy some herbs, it cost $7.99 a pound. $7.99 a pound! That's more than the cost of steak. I don't know about you, but that's expensive for me. With an aquaponic system, you can grow fresh organic herbs and they will keep on growing and keep on giving. Another way it's cost effective is that it will save you a lot of money on water bills because an aquaponic system uses 90% less water than a traditional gardening system. This is because the water continues to recirculate and you don't need to keep adding water like a traditional gardening system. Also, you don't have to weed. Because it sits in water, there are no weeds that will grow up like in traditional soil. You also don't have to add your own fertilizers because the waste from the fish are the fertilizer. It's also four to six times more productive than traditional gardening. And this is because you can pack more plants into the same square footage, as well as it's two to three times grows two to three times faster than traditional gardening. And that's because of how it absorbs the nitrates and nitrites directly into the plants, as opposed to traditional gardening. So there are so many reasons to do aquaponics. So you might be wondering where you can get one of these. Obviously, you can get one at the store, you can buy one. However, I highly encourage repurposing. That's how, where I got this one. One of my friends was actually getting rid of hers and I just asked if I could have it and repurpose it into this aquaponic system. You can too. You can visit your local thrift store and see if they have any for sale. Like I recently visited one and I saw all of these, these water pitchers being sold at the thrift store and you can reuse them and repurpose them into something as valuable as this. Okay, so the first step is we need to get the pebbles and we need to wash them. I bought this 50 pound bag at Home Depot. This is pea pebbles. Now this whole bag is $2.99. So let's wash some. Okay, so you can see that you definitely need to rinse it because it's really, really dirty. So. the amount of dirt. You don't want that to go in where your fish are. Okay, I think it's pretty much clean now. So once we've rinsed the pebbles, then we can put a first layer into the tank. step is we're going to fill the, the tank with water and I have a, a gallon pitcher here and we're just going to fill this up. So tap water is fine as long as we're using this top, uh, it's a water conditioner. Got this here and um, I'll show you I got this from the, the store, just a couple bucks. For this water conditioner, it takes out the chlorine 
and makes the water ready to go for the for the plants. Or, sorry, not for the plants, for the fish. So what I like to do is I like to put a bowl and in the base here so that it won't disperse the gravel. And it'll just kind of slowly disperse the deflects the water so it doesn't make the gravel fly all over the place. Okay, so now that we have the water in here, I'm going to add some the the dechlorinator and again we put 1.25 gallons. So this specifies 14 drops per gallon, which would mean we would add an extra 3 drops, so 17 drops. So I'm going to go ahead and add 17 drops here. 1 2 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. All right, great. So I have this thermometer. This is a dollar twenty-seven. Bought it over at uh, the pet store, and then <clears throat> this just help us to monitor. Uh, since we're putting a beta in here, it doesn't require that it has a heater, but just want to verify, you know, temperature-wise what, what we're talking about that's in the tank, just to make sure it doesn't get too cold. So picking the location is a, an important part of the process. We've put our aquaponic system here on the, on the kitchen counter and we wanted to have good access to light for the plants, but for the fish, the fish don't like to have direct sunlight. So this, this ledge right here actually blocks the direct sunlight, but still will get access for the, the plants. And we've also placed it here with the spout facing the sink, just in case we needed to drain any of the water off into the sink, if we needed to change water for the, for the fish or for whatever reason. So make sure you think through where you want to locate your aquaponic system. So we also need to make a hole in this top reservoir. We need to drill a hole so that the water can pump from the bottom reservoir to the upper. So I'm going to utilize this drill and I have a, a half inch hole uh, drill bit here and I'm going to drill a hole in this, in this corner. Okay, so I'm going to drill this hole and I'm bracing it on the counter. Now, obviously, you got to make sure you're not drilling into your counter. And I'm doing maybe about half inch away from the corner here. Half inch space direction from the corner. Okay. Okay, so what I have here are some door guards that are usually used on cars to protect the edge of the doors but in this case I'm going to be using them to be propping this up a little bit higher so you'll see what I mean I actually trimmed these guards off and they, they'll fit right over this edge here and you can see just got a Fit them over the edge, like that. There's one. And then this is the other, just fit them right over. There you go. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to place this and it'll make this stand up a little higher. It makes the whole reservoir stand a little bit higher. It gives us room for air to come in and gives us a bigger tank area. So I got this half inch clear plastic tubing and I got this at a local aquarium store for I think three bucks for the whole length of it and I cut off a seven inch segment this is a half inch diameter and you only need seven inches of it and this is to 
this is going to be the tube that we're going to pump the water from the lower reservoir to the upper. So you just take this and you can stick it into the half inch hole and just put it through there and you can poke in maybe about an inch above the upper reservoir. And then we can drop it right into our tank and you can see the tube should be right there in the corner. Okay, so what I have here is our, our herbs. Got a, a sweet basil. I got my Thai basil. This is my favorite base of all for cooking and putting in Thai dishes. My wife loves putting mint in Indian cooking. So we got mint and she uses a lot of cilantro too. So we got one of each. And what we need to do is we need to get the dirt off the herbs because this system uses no dirt. So we have a, a pot here that we can just shake all the dirt off into the pot. And then we'll just have the roots and then we'll put it into the, into the system. So I've got this uh, bucket of water and you just rinse off. So after you put the, the big particles of dirt, then it gets the, get the small particles of dirt off by getting a, a bucket of water and just rinsing the, the dirt off so that it'll just have the roots. And um, so this Brita, like all, all purifying systems come with a filter and this one we're gonna reuse and this one will just place right back into its normal location and this will be used to filter out, filter out any of the larger particulates. The next step is to fill this with the, the bed with the clean gravel. So this is the pump that I bought from Aquarium Adventure. This was 10 bucks and it's just a uh, single hose and it's a low wattage. Yeah, it's uh, 1.5 watts. So really low, very energy efficient. And you just plug it in and we got to insert it into here, into this pipe. And then we we'll can see what happens here. We'll start to bubble over, which is exactly what we want. So basically the air is forcing water to come up the pipe and then it will begin to fill up the upper reservoir, as you can see. And it's also aerating the water at the same time, so it does dual purpose. You can see it's overflowing and starting to fill the upper reservoir here. Then we can begin to load the plants and you know, pour the rest of the clean gravel in. And then we can start to put the plants in. have to get some more gravel and then cover it over, cover the roots over. I'm going to get some more gravel. see I've planted them into the gravel and just put gravel around so that they're sitting in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to let the, let the system cycle for 24 hours so it will 
filter, begin filtering, and the water should clear up. And then we'll drop the bait in and tomorrow morning. Good morning! Now is the time that we get to add our fish to the aquaponic system. The system has been cycling overnight and has cleared up a lot of the particulates and has settled and filtered and is ready to go to accept this fish. So the reason why we've chosen a beta to put in this system is they're a fairly resilient and hardy fish. They don't require the use of a heater, although you could add one if you wanted to, but they don't require it. Another thing is that they don't require an aerator. They can actually go to the surface and gulp air if necessary. So it's a fairly resilient fish and good for this system. Now, we're putting only one beta in here, and the reason why is a couple reasons. <clears throat> we have the, the ratio for an aquaponic system is usually one fish for every three plants. One fish or to every three or four plants. And also the betas, they, if a male beta is in particular, they will fight each other if you put a, another male beta in. So you can only have one beta at a time. Anyway, our system can only take one beta. So the first thing we need to do is just to pull out the aerator hose. Once we pulled out the aerator hose, I have this 3.75 inch tall glass and I just put it back here and then I'm going to set the flower, sorry, the plant tray on top of it so it drains off. Just set that right on top. <clears throat> and then we're ready to add the, add the beta, add Neil. Okay, here we go. We're ready to drop Neil into the tank. Ready to go in, Neil? All right. Come on, buddy. I think I'll just put the water in like this and let him swim out. There you go. So the beta should be fed twice daily. To do so, you could just need to pull up the aeration tube such that it is above the surface of the water. And then you only need one or two pellets. <clears throat> so just need one pellet and you can just drop it down the tube. There it goes. There we have it. We've successfully repurposed the Sprita dispenser into an aquaponic system. The total cost of all the parts, including the plants, is about $35. If you grow the plants from seed, it will cost about $25 because the total cost of the plants is about $9 and a pack of seeds is usually about a dollar. So you can get it down to about $25, which is amazing to get your own homegrown herbs and a pet like Neil. So I wish you all the best. I highly encourage you to try and make your own aquaponic system. And I hope this helps you, this tutorial helps you in doing so. Best wishes to you.